Hello world and welcome back to the final episode of Batania. Today we're going to be covering the six different gifts you'll get from defeating the Ritual Gaia Mark II. Now you will be able to receive any six of these in any random order when defeating the Ritual of Gaia. Now you get them each by rolling the dice that you get after defeating him. So it could be any single side, but once you do have it, you can roll it. And once you have all six, you end up just like getting random rewards like I get Gary Spirits there. As you can see, as soon as I picked this up, it gave me a soul bound uh, item. So that means if anyone else picks this up, uh, it just doesn't work. It will st actually start killing them. Now each of these items, when you roll them, they will start to or, to or they'll be soul bound to you automatically as well and if you drop them or try to give them to someone else it will start hurting them entirely now once you do roll them make sure you do not lose them because once you lose them you can't get them back again if you lose this item in lava then what will actually happen is that uh you can never re-roll the same device again each dice roll will give you one of these and never give you a duplicate so starting with the first one, this is the Fruit of Grisaya. This is essentially going to give us health regeneration. So if I go into survival mode here, we see that we have got ourselves a lot of hunger missing. Now I've got a greater band of mana because this will need mana generation. So I'm going to equip that now. Now if I hold this in my hand and then eat it for the first time, as you can see, it instantly gives me all of my hunger bars back. Very simple stuff. This apple we have here, you better get used to uh, eating some apple flavors when uh, that's what it says in the Let's Go Britannia. Next, we have the Key of the King's Law. This is a very powerful weapon, and what it will actually do is spawn in up to 20 different projectiles that will actually... Um fire down across enemies now for the best effect here i'm going to do this in third person so what happens if i hold this down you can see that we get a whole load of these different tools appearing in the open now wherever i look it and once i release my right click it's going to fire all of them and create explosions where they land it's a very very powerful weapon so you can do this many many times and you can see as i look around it sort of changes direction i find i like to do it in third person just because it looks very very cool um, but yeah, you can get up to 20 of these. Now, you don't have to do it all at once. It's kind of hard to just do one, but you can hold it down. You see, we didn't get all of them there, but uh, it doesn't seem to actually fire until you finish doing them all. So I can do the other rest of them over here, and but they'll all still fire in the same direction. It's a little bit strange, but as you can see, they sort of flew around a little bit. Next up, we have the Eye of the Flugel. This allows you to teleport to any location that you've previously, previously determined. As well as that, is if you have the Flugel Tiara, it will allow you to fly without having any any charge left in the tiara but at the cost of higher mana now in order to teleport first you must shift right click on a position in the world now this is our origin point essentially so i can go and fly to any location now and as long as i have mana in my inventory if i hold down right click while holding it eventually it'll tp me back to this point now you can just hold shift right click and you can change it to any place you so desire the last three are all rings starting off with the ring of thor now i've shown this a little bit in a previous episode and this works specifically with the terror shatterer it's going to increase the terror shatterer's effect now i have this to ss tier already which makes it very very powerful but if i take this now and let's just go into this large crevice which i've already created what i can do is if i equip this here so that's now actually in my bauble slot down here as you can see here what i do is if i activate the terror shatterer now at this level it should do i believe it's either 9x9 nine nine or 11x11 11 11. it's been quite a while but when you have it with the ring of thor it turns it into a cube effect not quite the full radius of course it's obviously it's a lot bigger than it is wider but as you can see it's done one two three four five six different layers thick down as well so it can get very very powerful very quickly the next ring is the ring of odin and also very very powerful ring now what i can do here is if i go back into survival mode when i equip this ring it's going to first give me instantly 10 more hearts which is very very powerful now obviously to get the rest of these 10 hearts i can use this regen ring because this is going to take down my hunger bars but as well as that it says in the book is that it also gives you various other effects so if i get here my uh flint and steel as you see here and then we'll go back to survival what it can actually also do is stop me from burning i am completely ineffective 
of fire. As well as that is if I go into the water here, it will also stop me from drowning. Now you will actually still have your health bubbles or your air bubbles, but once the air bubbles go to zero, you actually won't actually take any damage. As well as that is if your hunger went all the way down to zero as well, you wouldn't actually take any starvation damage, which is very cool. However, of course, you will not be able to regain health. As you can see here, I'm not getting any health and now I'm also not starving. Now, if I hold my fruit, of course, this is going to allow me to get my hunger bars back up. Now, the last one is the Ring of Loki. If I take this here and now equip it, this will now be in my slots, as you can see here. And now what this does is allows me to manipulate the area of blocks that are in my surroundings. Now, what do I mean by this? For one, I'm going to need this Truncator and the Terra Shatterer, but that'll be for some things that are more advanced. So what I can do is if I hold Shift here, I've now basically set a quote unquote origin point. You can tell it's the origin point because it's got these thick borders. What I can do here is now if I shift right click other areas, you can see that I'm now starting to form a whole nother area. Now, the cool thing about this is that this is obviously linked to this origin point. Now, if I hold shift and right click, that is now locked those together and I can move them around however I want. Now, something I can do is if I get a load of grass blocks here, it could be any type of block. If I now place this down, sorry, not place that down, shift right click placing down, it's going to place all these blocks in the exact same area and this will follow along with me. Now, obviously, it's not creating a whole new area because it's only going to be placing blocks when there's space available, which is pretty cool. As you can see, it moves around you very easily. So you could make large walls very, very quickly. Think of it more as like a builder's wand type of thing. Now, it kind of works with breaking blocks, but not uh, as you think. You can't just break these blocks normally as I have done there. But just to demonstrate what I mean next, what we can do is hold shift and right click. This is going to vanish our selected blocks and start a new origin block. And then to get rid of it, you just remove the origin block by shift right clicking on it again. So you can shift right click anywhere on the floor to essentially get rid of it, but don't do it anywhere in the sky. Now, there are two main ways you can break with the origin block. Now, the first way is the truncator. Now, in 1.16, it's a little bit broken. The, the effect of Terra Shatterer or Terra Truncator or Terra Tools should actually trans uh, go through the origin block. However, in 1.16 for my version, I don't know why, but the Terra Truncator doesn't really seem to be working too well. But I'll demonstrate how it should work anyway. So here I've selected an origin point. What I can do is hold down Shift and right click here. And now I've selected the bottom of that tree. Now the way this should work, but for whatever reason it doesn't in my version, but I definitely know it does work because I've seen it in other versions. If I break this block here, it should break that block as well, but it hasn't done so. Now I'll just do it in survival mode just to prove. If I break this block, it doesn't work. But what you can do is in the way you're meant to be able to make your powers go through is by holding shift and breaking the block. But as we know, when you hold shift, that restricts the truncator to be only doing a single block. So it does work. We can break the wood like that. It does work. However, it doesn't do the full chopping of the tree because when you hold shift, that's what actually breaks it. Now, as you can see, I can't break any other areas as well. Um, the reason that's working is because not working, sorry, is because this origin point is still in the air. So you want to make note of where your origin point is. Now, uh, if I break that again, it will work again. So what I can do is break that there and so on and so forth. Now, what you can do, however, is if we hold shift and right click on here, obviously we have the moving status now. So if I place black our block here, what we can do is have our blocks placed like this and sort of cut the tree this way. Sorry, I placed that in the wrong section. There you go. So what I can do is actually cut the tree in this sort of way now. It's a bit of a broken way of doing it, but it does work. Now, a better way of actually working it is with the Terra Shatterer. Now, the very, very cool thing with the Terra Shatterer is this. So if I place down a, uh, sorry, if I first activate the Terra Shatterer and break this here, we know that this is our area here. So if we get this, we'll have this say as an origin point. Now I'm going to have to just do this by example. Now it's done this massive block because obviously we have the Thor ring. So temporarily, I'm going to take away the fourth ring because this is easier to set up. So what I can do is obviously we know that this is going to be doing one, two, three, four, five blocks. So if I go one, two, three, four, five blocks on the sixth, this should break there. Okay, that's off by one. So let's go here. We'll have that there. Then if you go one, two, three, four, and then five here. There you go, we've broken that. Let's have this here. Now what we can do is also do it up top. So if we go directly above and say here, 
directly above again and have that in line there. And then one more time we'll have that here. I believe that's all in line. So what we can do here is with the Terra Shatterer now, we can activate all these different blocks. So if I hold this here, this is now our origin point. We can now select these other points by shift right clicking all these. Obviously you can't fly, but if you're at this point of the game, you probably have the Fugal TR and can fly. So now we have all that linked up. Now if we shift right click on this block to have it be all finished selecting, what we can do is as we hold shift with this activated, we can start doing all of these blocks at the same time. As you can see, they start falling down. But they're breaking again, they're breaking again, and they're going through and breaking all these different areas at once. It's very, very, very powerful and a strong way of breaking things. So now we're up to there. We've, we've broken all this. Apparently, I'm a little bit off somehow, and I've managed to make a little bit of a gap here, but that's how that works. Now, if we have our Ring of Thor as well, we can go one stronger. A little bit of lag. Because it's doing it all at once. But as you can see, you can claim a very large area. And this is this origin block is obviously moving with you. So if we do it one more time. There we go. It's really laggy. But eventually it does do it. You can clear massive areas. Now I have quite a beefy computer. I'm working with a 3090 here. But as you can see, I've cleared that all in about three blocks. It's incredibly powerful. But for now, that is everything when it comes to Britannia. But not just this episode. That is the end of Britannia in total. So if you have enjoyed, please don't forget to leave a the like and subscribe. This would really help me out and ring the bell button to stay notified when these tutorials go live. But I have a question for you guys now. What tutorial do you want to see on next? What mod shall we work on? I'm going to leave a link down to in the description to a community tab post where I'm going to be posting a question of which mod you would like to see next. So click down below and have a vote for yourself. I'm not sure what they're going to be. So uh, you're going to have to just have a look on that link and see what ones I've chosen to cover next. But if you want your voice to be heard, definitely give a vote. But until next time, guys, take care.